We are anonymous. We are legion. Expect us. The biggest hacker group or hacktivist in the world, Anonymous needs no introduction. In this video, we are going to look at how Anonymous began, how it started, and when did the hacktivist group made first headline and became famous, and what impact it had on the world and some of its most amazing works. Let's start off with the word Anonymous. It is a Greek word in which anon means without and namas means name, so without name. It basically means that a name is missing or a name is not given. So exactly how did Anonymous start? Where do they come from? And what are they trying to do? The origins or genesis of Anonymous. It began in the year 2003. It all began with a concept, an idea of a website called 4chan, 4chan.com. 4chan is a collection of online forums where users can post comments and share photos. It's based on the old bulletin board systems that were big on the web in the early 2000s. There are dozens of forums, all tagged with an abbreviation like SP for sports, B for video games, and S for sexy beautiful women. The kicker, almost everyone is anonymous. Posts and posters are given unique ID numbers, and any identity sharing is usually moved off of 4chan and onto a chat platform like IRC. That website was an image board. It is a type of internet forum. An internet forum or message board means an online discussion site where people can hold conversations in the form of message or they can also post different images in different chat rooms. Also in an internet forum the message may be longer than one line or they can also be temporarily archived depending on the level of the access of the user on the forum and the way they set up the chat room. So you get the basic idea now of what an image board and an internet forum is. So basically it revolved around the posting of images and alongside there were many texts and discussion. But the concept and the idea was that everyone was anonymous. The site that they were chatting on had basically many things like manga, anime, porn, anything you can think of. And also a fun fact. The first image boards were created in Japan. So how did it originate it from this site? So the whole concept was taken from the website 4chan.org. So it was a website in which you could talk about anything and you could be, you could post images, post articles and you could be anonymous. There would be no way of finding your IP address, knowing your address from the internet or knowing your name so people could share their opinion freely without thinking of other people being judgmental and they could be themselves they could talk about anything freely without having to worry about what other people were do and what consequences would other people have so it was something that People would express their views and the way they see things freely on the internet and they could be absolute nobodies. No one would even know who they are or what their identity is. So the whole 4chan community and the anonymous hacktivist began with this concept and this idea. Even if you're used to seeing offensive content pop up on Twitter or Facebook, it's not even close to what's being posted and allowed up on 4chan and 8chan. 4chan came first and it allowed users to anonymously post whatever. And that whatever quickly became pretty much anything offensive you can think of. Go to the political board and you'll find racism, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, misogyny, it's all there. But some things were too much even for 4chan. And so a new company formed a new site and 8chan was born that promised even less moderation. They call themselves the darkest reaches of the internet. Now, what does hacktivist mean? It is the combination of two words, hacker and activist. Hacker is someone who manipulates, controls, changes data from the internet or from a particular targeted user or an organization for personal gains or for the gains of an organization. And an activist means someone 
could be a person, an organization or a political party who campaigns or fights around to bring social change in the world. So this is how the history of the mysterious hacktivist group began. Sort of brought forth the anonymous movements, uh, which in a way was quite left wing and quite progressive. They were taking down the Church of Scientology and then also sort of, um, yeah, supported free speech. Now let's talk about the time when Anonymous and the website 4chan was not just a website anymore. It became something big. It turned into not just only messages and articles and some posts or a bunch of group discussion. It turned into something really big. It turned into protest. It turned into unity of people that were claiming they were a legion. It all started in the year 2008 when a group of members of Anonymous started a protest movement against the practice of Church of Scientology. It was a following series of actions against the church. This movement became known as Project Channelogy. Now let me explain what Church of Scientology is. It is actually a group of interconnected corporation entities and other organizations which are devoted to practice of Scientology. That's why it is the name Church of Scientology. Now let's talk about Scientology, what it actually is. It is nothing but a set of beliefs and practices which were made and invented by American author L. Ron Hubert. Now Scientology is considered as a religious movement. It is a cult which means it has numerous and various people which are following this set of beliefs and these practices. They not only believe it, they worship it. It is also a very good business for them. The organization who is running the cult, it makes good money for them and it is a really good business as people are blind believers. It boasts some of the most famous people on the planet, claims to be capable of curing drug addiction, and says that following its teachings will lead to a life of success and fulfillment. And yet, despite these promises, Scientology remains an organization mired in controversy. Tonight, we look at new allegations concerning Scientology's leader. So at that time, Anonymous, which was a leaderless internet-based group, started this project. When? The Church of Scientology attempted to remove an interview of Tom Cruise, the actor, who gave an interview of Scientology. They attempted to remove some of the interview's context and some of its material. I think it's a privilege to call yourself a Scientologist and it's something that you have to earn. And because a Scientologist does, he or she has the ability to create new and better realities and improve conditions. Uh, being a Scientologist, you look at someone and you know absolutely that you can help them. So for me, it really is KSW, and it's just like, it's, it's something that uh, I don't mince words with that, you know, with, with anything that LRH does, but that policy to me has really gone, boy. And I, and I, I, there's a time I went through and I said, you know what? When I read it, I, you know, I just went, Phew. this is it. This is exactly it. Okay. Being a Scientologist, when you drive past an accident, it's not like anyone else. As you drive past, you know you have to do something about it because you know you're the only one that can really help. But that's, that's what drives me, is that I know that we have an opportunity and uh, to really help for the first time, have effectively change people's lives, and uh, I am dedicated to that. I'm gonna, I'm absolutely, uncompromisingly <laughs> dedicated to that. Orgs are there to help, okay? But we, as you know, as also the public, it's like we have a responsibility. It's not just the orgs. It's not just Dave Miscavige. You know, it's not just not just me, it's you, it's everyone out there kind of rereading KSW and looking at what needs to be done and saying, okay, am I going to do it or am I not going to do it? Period. And am I going to look at that guy or am I too afraid because I have my own out ethics to put in someone else's ethics? 
And that's all it comes down to. Because I won't hesitate to put ethics in on someone else, you know, because I put it ruthlessly in on myself. And I think that uh, I respect that in, in others. And, uh, you know, I'm there to help, and we're here to help. And my opinion is, is that, look, you're either on board or you're not on board, okay? But just, if you're on board, you're on board just like the rest of us, period. We are the authorities on getting people off drugs. We are the authorities on the mind. We are the authorities on improving conditions. Criminon, we can rehabilitate criminals. Way to happiness, we can bring peace. Night cultures uh, that once you know these tools and you know that they work, it's it's not good enough that, that I'm just doing okay. Yeah, Tom Cruise was also a Scientologist. Project Channelogy began in the form of a YouTube video which was titled Message to Scientology on January 21st, 2008. That video is still up and this is what it looks like. Hello, leaders of Scientology. We are anonymous. Over the years, we have been watching you. Your campaigns of misinformation, your suppression of dissent, your litigious nature. All of these things have caught our eye. With the leakage of your latest propaganda video into mainstream circulation, the extent of your malign influence over those who have come to trust you as leaders has been made clear to us. Anonymous has therefore decided that your organization should be destroyed. For the good of your followers, for the good of mankind and for our own enjoyment, we shall proceed to expel you from the internet and systematically dismantle the Church of Scientology in its present form. We recognize you as serious opponents, and do not expect our campaign to be completed in a short time frame. However, you will not prevail forever against the angry masses of the body politic. Your choice of methods, your hypocrisy and the general artlessness of your organization have sounded its death knell. You have nowhere to hide, because we are everywhere. You will find no recourse in attack, because for each of us that falls, ten more will take this place. We are cognizant of the many who may decry our methods as parallel to those of the Church of Scientology. Those who espouse the obvious truth that your organization will use the actions of Anonymous as an example of the persecution of which you have for so long warned your followers. This is acceptable to Anonymous. In fact, it is encouraged. We are your SPs. Over time, as we begin to merge our pulse with that of your church, the suppression of your followers will become increasingly difficult to maintain. Believers will become aware that salvation needn't come at the expense of their livelihood. They will become aware that the stress and the frustration that they feel is not due to us, but a source much closer to them. Yes, we are as peace but the sum of suppression we could ever muster is eclipsed by that of your own RTC. Knowledge is free. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. This video states that Anonymous is exposing the church which is trying to censor or remove some of its contacts. They were trying to suppress some information from the viewers and Anonymous kinda exposed that. And they also showed their intention of removing the church from the internet. So what happened was this video was a message and the people on the website 4chan who were hackers, they followed up with DDoS attack. DDoS means denial of service attacks. It is like continuous attacks, cyber attacks on your router, which then makes your router to fry. So for some time your router is unable to function. It's like when a group of people are crowding near the entry door of a shop and making it hard for legitimate customers to enter for it disturbs the trade. It's like that. Many people just who are not customers, they just show up and that's the closest example which I can give. So they hack their printers, their telecommunication services and they also did a bunch of prank calls and lots and lots of other operations which were intended to disrupt the Church of Scientology's operation. In February of 2008, it turned into a protest which depended on legal methods. So that included non-violent protest, 
which included many people coming out wearing the mask of anonymous people uniting together just for the sake of taking down the church. They also made an attempt to get the revenue service to check for the tax fraud that the church might be committing and they also demanded for their tax statement. So things started escalating real quick. The members of the church which were on news, they said that Anonymous were nothing but cyber terrorists and they were anti-religion trying to harass, disrupt this religion and some other spokesperson which was representing the church of Scientology, he once claimed that he received bomb threats, death threats and other terrorist activities threats which then were confirmed by the FBI that those attacks or those threats were not linked with Anonymous at all. So the charges against Anonymous and its members were dropped from these threats and they were cleared. From this, this was the story of Project Channelogy which gave Anonymous lots of attention and it became a hacktivist. From people chatting, discussing, posting and writing articles about stuff on 4chan on various topics to people coming together of different talents, different skill sets uniting just to make a change. This was a moment of activism. This is when the first protest began. This is when Anonymous became a group of united people which were a legion who would fight for justice and would fight for a political cause with legal and non-legal ways for the change of a better society. Now let's ask this question first. Do Anonymous impacted or change the world for a greater good? And the answer is absolutely yes. There are lots of reasons why they are considered vigilantes and hacktivists for justice. Now let's talk about some of the incidents or some of their work which were meant for nothing but the good of the society. In 2011, they launched a project called Dark Discovery. Now, if you know Dark Web, you know that it has lots of gruesome and dark stuff in it. And there's a site in it called The Hidden Wiki, which is a guide to many underground websites that support illegal activities on the dark web. Anonymous gained access to Hidden Wiki. They hunted down CP websites, the websites that contained CP, and primarily attacked a website called Lolita Siri that was a file sharing website that pedophiles used very frequently. And they gained access to the people that were using it. They publicly posted the names of 1589 members showing that they would stand no such thing and are out to prevent the injustice of such notoriety. Anonymous also showed that they are willing to go anywhere for getting justice done, even the dark net, where law officials fail to get the job done at times as well. And did you know that once Anonymous took down 20% of the dark web, which was in CP operation, and also they have taken down more than 10,000 websites which were related to this topic on the dark web. The other operation is called Free North Korea. In this operation, Anonymous is taking the fight to North Korea. In the beginning of the first month, the group hacked a China-based North Korean controlled website which was called urimizokiri.com and they took the control of the organization Twitter Flickr accounts and they installed a warning poster. If you ask me, that's a sick photoshop. And yeah, Kim Jong-un is definitely a pig. Now, if you ask me, pigs are way, 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 way better than them. And Anonymous also claimed that North Korea is a direct threat to peace and freedom of humanity. They also claimed that US government is also crooked and it is also an enemy of Anonymous. But the most important thing that they demanded was they wanted North Korea to stop making nukes and stop making nuclear war threats and they urged Kim Jong-un to install a free democracy in North Korea to give people the freedom so that they could don't have to live in dictatorship anymore. Now let's talk about the Operation Occupy Nigeria. Anonymous had actually joined forces with People's Liberal Front and also the cyber hacktivist of Nigeria. 
they promised a relentless and devastating assault upon the web assets of the Nigerian government. This all happened because the Nigerian government, they decided to remove a fuel subsidy. Now the majority of Nigerians life, their very existence, their daily bread, their water, it all depended on the fuel subsidy. Now subsidy works differently in different scenarios and in different cases. Let me explain what a subsidy is. For example, Elon Musk created Tesla, which is basically electric cars. Now, the amount of wastage, the pollution that is cleared from the air is actually measured on a scale through the amount of time the car is being driven. Its average point is taken and the amount of cars sold, every car's total life run is measured. So the amount of pollution he takes out of the atmosphere by his product Tesla, the government has to pay him money. The money is paid by the per unit pollution that the product takes out of the environment. And this example just shows the perfect illustration of how subsidies work. So the government removed the subsidy so the people, the Nigerians would have to suffer and government would put more money in their pockets. So due to the removal of subsidy, the price of fuel skyrocketed and therefore transportation became very expensive and therefore major extreme hardships for the Nigerians began. So Anonymous decided to protest against that and they did hack a economic and financial crime commission website with a false report of arresting of people which involved oil sector replaced the normal page. So folks, this is all we're gonna talk about for this video. There are actually way many things that Anonymous has done and if I go through it all, it would be like hours or days long. So this is just it. And I just really love the concept of Anonymous because Anonymous could be anyone. It could be the guy sitting next to me on a bus stop. It could be my neighbor. It could be someone I know. It could be someone I don't know. It could be that person on TV. And it can also be you. I mean, to join Anonymous, we don't need to like learn and hack and do some crazy ethical or unethical things. If we see the noble things what Anonymous is fighting for and if we just stand by them, we are legion, we are Anonymous. So fighting for something wrong together by standing together, whether it be on the internet or whether it be walking in a protest. If we are fighting for something happening that is wrong, if we are fighting injustice and we are acknowledging what is right. Even in the little things we do, we are legion, we are anonymous, we do not forget, we do not forgive, expect us.